What's going on, guys? Welcome back to DCS World and, again, my A10C tutorial series. Today we're going to take the A10 a bit out of its element and we're going to do a little bit of air-to-air. -air. So the A10 is capable of carrying the AIM-9 Sidewinder missile. You can actually see it on my wingtip right there. It can carry two of them uh, per pylon and it can only carry them on the most outboard pylons. Generally, for most loadouts, you will carry a max of two uh, on either side uh, because one of your sides of your wings will usually carry the jammer, and the jammer can only go on the outboard wingtip pylon as well. So, for most intents and purposes, you will only ever have two Sidewinder missiles per sortie. So, uh, just... Uh, quickly to talk about them, the AIM-9 Sidewinder is a heat-seeking air-to-air uh, missile. It is considered a FOX-2 missile uh, compared to other missiles that could either be FOX-1 and FOX-3 radar-guided missiles. The A-10 isn't capable of carrying any of those because the A-10 does not have an air-to-air -air radar. It can, however, use its Sidewinders if it needs to. The A-10 obviously is not designed for air-to-air -air combat. It doesn't like to do air-to-air -air combat. It is very uncomfortable doing air-to-air -air combat. However, it can find itself in situations where it might need to self-defend against a, an enemy fighter that gets in too close. And a savvy pilot can uh, use what he has available to uh, hopefully stay alive and maybe even shoot down or at least scare away the bad guy. We're going to do a couple of things here. First, we're going to learn how to use the AIM-9. Uh, I've got the mission paused here just so we can talk. We'll learn how, we'll learn how to use the AIM-9, just sort of boresight, regular. Uh, we'll also touch on using the targeting pod in air-to-air -air mode. And we'll also briefly touch on using the GAU-8 gun uh, as an anti-air weapon, to which it is somewhat capable of, uh, albeit a little, a little finicky sometimes. But uh, you'll see what I mean in just a second. So let's unpause, and I've got autopilot on. I just want to make sure I don't speed up too much. Uh, I've got, you can see them out there in the distance. I've got a couple of uh, dummy MiG-29s just flying straight and level that are nice enough to uh, act as nice, juicy air targets for us to shoot down. So we're on pause now. Slow my speed up a little bit here. I don't want to get too much faster than these guys because I did set them pretty slow just to make this nice and easy for us. All right, the way we employ our AIM-9 missiles is we need to get the HUD master mode into air-to-air -air mode. So you're familiar with pressing the HOTAS master mode button to get us into CCIP, CCRP, and guns mode. However, to get to air-to-air -air mode, we need to press and hold the master mode button. So let's do that now. So we're now in air to air mode. You can see on the HUD there, and we've got a little bit of symbology. So quick pause and look. We have a little circle up here. This represents our AIM-9 Sidewinder seeker head. We also have, and it's a little hard to see because I'm flying straight, we're also going to have a gun funnel pop up here. But uh, we'll worry about the guns in a little bit. So for using the AIM-9, uh, it's actually pretty simple. What we're going to do is with the HUD soy, we can use our slew control to move the Maverick Seeker head around. And naturally, if you're not slewing it and it's not caged to boresight, that it actually got a lock there. Whoops, I hit the... Let me get below these guys. I'm hitting their wake turbulence a little bit. All right. When it's not saved to boresight... Which, by the way, to cage the Maverick to Boresight is just China Hat aft short. Just as with any other weapon that we can slew around, we can cage it to Boresight. Uh, but when it's not caged, it sort of floats around and is looking for heat signatures. Now, the way the Maverick, or correction, the way the AIM-9 actually locks onto a target, you can sort of hear it, it's a little faint. There is a sort of a low-level buzz that you hear from the AIM-9 Seeker. It's looking for an IR contrast lock on one of these targets in front of me. So if I let it slew over 
that MiG-29 that's in front of me, let me move off foresight a little bit, you can see the Seeker is now locked onto that MiG. And you can hear the tone of the AIM-9 got very high pitched. That's our signal that it's achieved a lock on. Now we can break that lock either by slewing the Seeker head away from it or by doing China Hat aft to put the AIM-9 back to Borsay. We can also do what's called a search mode or a uh, seam mode, I believe it's called. So the way we do that is with the HUD soy and the AIM-9 selected in air to air mode, we do TMS forward short and it actually did it real quickly. Let me get away from it. The AIM-9 seeker is now spinning around our bore site. And what uh, that enables us to do is just maneuver our aircraft's bore site right over the target, and then it's going to automatically snap to lock. That's pretty neat, right? Now, once we have a lock and we've got a good tone, just as with every other weapon, press and hold weapon release button and Fox 2. And that's a splash on that MiG-29. All right, while we're looking forward here, let's actually go over to our targeting pod. And for the most part, we've been using air to ground mode, but we want air to air mode this time. So let's select AA for air to air mode. Now that's going to mean that the targeting pod is looking slightly more upward. And just as be with before, we can slew it around and we can use the targeting pod to find air targets. And in fact, we found one here. So we can actually lock it up with our targeting pod. Let me pause the camera there. We can lock it up with our targeting pod by pressing TMS forward short. It'll get it into an air-to-air an -air point track mode. And we can zoom in and get a real good look at that airplane. And we know for a fact that that airplane is a MiG-29 and it's a bad guy. So that being said, we've got him locked up in our targeting pod. And that's now, let's now also lock him up with our AIM-9, HUD Soy, slave over him, get a little bit of speed here, and that'll be another FOX-2. And that's a splash. And that bad boy is going down. Now, for the gun in air-to-air -air mode. So, we want to make sure our gun is set to either gun arm or gun pack. The uh, precision attitude control doesn't matter much in air-to-air -air mode with the gun. However, what does matter is selecting the gun funnel. Now. A uh, quick pause here. Let's look forward at the HUD, a little bit of symbology to talk about. So we now have the gun funnel, and the way I enabled that was with the HUD soy. I did DMS left or right to select a wingspan profile. The airplane has several wingspan profiles that determine the width of the gun funnel uh, based on the wingspan of whatever we're targeting. So right now it's set to an AH-64 Apache helicopter, but if I unpause again real quick and just cycle through it, we can select an SU-25, an F-15, an A-10, uh, some sort of custom, some sort of fixed gun sight, and then back to AH-64. There are other profiles that are available. Uh, you, they just need to be enabled from the HUD options. I'm not really going to bother right now. I'm just going to use the F-15. Uh, so let's make it the... Yeah, no, we'll use the F-15's profile. That's fine. So what we need to do... We see the target out ahead of us. I'm going to leave... I'm going to leave the camera zoomed in on the HUD here. We have the target out ahead of us. What we need to do is maneuver to get the enemy's wingspan within our gun funnel. You can see the gun funnel. Let me just exaggerate my flight. You can see it floating around. The gun funnel. 
We want to get within probably around 3,000 feet of the target, so I'm going to speed up here. And this is actually pretty hard to do. It's, it's pretty hard to accurately gun down enemy airplanes or even enemy helicopters in the A-10. It is doable. It just requires a lot of practice, steady hand, and a good amount of skill. So I just need to get nice and close to this guy coming up on his tail now. And I believe he's close enough, so line him up in the gun funnel and guns, guns, guns. And you see that mist? It's hard to do. There is no precision attitude control in air-to-air -air mode, so... Let's try again. Guns, guns, guns. And I hit him. So that's the basics of air-to-air -air combat in the A-10. Um, realistically, it's not a situation you ever want to find yourself in, but uh, you are capable of a little bit of self-defense if you want to. And in fact, uh, there are some people out there who do load out the A-10 uh, with, instead of just two AIM-9s, they arm them up with four and forgo the jammer, and then they go helicopter hunting. The A-10 can actually be pretty good at that, uh, mainly because helicopters will stay low to the ground, and the A-10 can be low to the ground as well, and also fly pretty slow as to not just overshoot the helicopters. But, in general, you're not going to be doing too much air-to-air -to -air combat in the A-10 if you can avoid it. If you have to do air-to-air -air combat, you're in, you're in pretty big trouble already. So uh, don't worry about it too much, but um, get out there and practice a little bit. It's good to know how to use the AIM-9s. And uh, with that, uh, we'll end this video here. So I hope you guys find that helpful, and I'll see you next time. Take care.